In our previous videos, we were looking at how we could approximate elasticity, or how sensitive we are to price change, based on a steep or flatter demand curve. So we're looking at the fact that when you change the price, how much does quantity demanded change? How much does the amount that consumers are willing and able to buy change? We know the law of demand says when the price goes down, quantity demanded goes up. The question is, how much? Now, the slope of the demand curve can give us somewhat of an approximation, steeper, more inelastic, flatter, more elastic. But the calculation of elasticity of demand or price elasticity is a bit more complicated than just finding the slope. Because the elasticity coefficient is somewhere on a continuum between infinity, perfectly elastic demand, and perfectly inelastic demand, right? We're looking for that number for where we fall in between zero and infinity. And we do know if the elasticity coefficient is more than one, we are elastic. And if it is between zero and one, we are inelastic. So let's dive into a little bit more of the complication as to how you would actually calculate elasticity. How do you get that elasticity coefficient? Well, we said that the slope of the demand curve is just an approximation for elasticity. And that's because in a single demand curve, the elasticity is actually changing. So on a demand curve, there is actually a point where your demand is unit elastic. And there are points on the demand curve where your price elasticity is less than one. And if it's less than one, what does that mean? It means you're inelastic. And there are points on the demand curve where your price elasticity or elasticity of demand is greater than one, where it's actually elastic. So just using the slope of the demand curve, steep or flat, doesn't really get to the heart of that elasticity coefficient. So we actually have a way to calculate the elasticity coefficient, and we can see that by looking at two points on the demand curve and comparing them. So the actual formula for the elasticity coefficient is the percentage change, remember that triangle delta is a mathematical symbol meaning change, percentage change in quantity demanded, come on, I think I've reached the outer bounds of where I can draw. Quantity demanded. Let's try it over here. Elasticity is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. So we're looking at how quantity demanded changes relative to the price change. Now this can be a complicated mathematical calculation. So we actually have a more simple mathematical approach to find the elasticity coefficient. This is what is called the midpoint method. So let's actually just write out, if we can here, our midpoint method. for calculating elasticity of demand. So the formula for this calculation says that I have two points on my demand curve and we're going to find the calculation by taking the second quantity minus the first and we're gonna divide that by the average of the two. That's the midpoint in this midpoint method. So Q2 plus Q1, 
and we're going to divide that by 2. So we're finding the average of the two compared to the distance between the two quantities. And then we divide this by the price of the second minus the price of the first, divided by, again, the average, this time of the price, P2 plus P1, all divided by 2. So you're taking the distance between the quantities and dividing it by their average. You're taking the distance of the prices and dividing it by their average, and then you're dividing the two. So this is a way to get at this percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. So let's actually work through two examples, and let's continue with our movie theater example that we were doing before. So we had, let's say, a price of $15. And we had a quantity of 100. We then dropped the price to $10. And our quantity went up to 300. So we changed the price. The quantity demanded changed a lot. So we expect this to be elastic. And an elasticity coefficient that is elastic has a coefficient or a number that's greater than what? We expect it to be greater than 1, somewhere between 1 and infinity. So let's do the calculation. So our second quantity is 300. We're subtracting it from our first quantity, which is 100. Okay, that's the top part. Then we have our average of our quantities, so 300 plus 100 divided by 2. And if we simplify that down, we have a distance in the quantities of 200 divided by 300 plus 100 is 400 divided by 2. So the average of the two is 200. Okay, So that gave us this first part of our formula. We're then going to divide that by what's happening with the price. So we're going to take our second price, which is 10 subtract it from 15 and then we're going to divide that by the average so p2 is 10 p1 is 15 so we have 10 plus 15 25 and we're going to divide that by 2 so we get 12 and a half and we have our price change here goes from 10 to minus 15 we have a negative 5. okay so 200 divided by 200, anything divided by itself is 1. And here we have our negative 5 divided by 12.5. If you take negative 5 divided by 12.5 and put it in a calculator, you get negative 0.4. So what is 1 divided by a negative 0.4? Well, if we do that calculation, we put it in our calculator, we're going to end up with a negative 0.5555555. And we can write that this way. So you can put a line above the 5, and that means the 5 keeps going. Or we can say this is approximately 0.56. Now notice this negative here. That negative is because of the law of demand. When the price goes up, quantity demanded goes down. When the price goes down, quantity demanded goes up. So you're always going to end up with a negative here because of that law of demand. We essentially ignore that negative and we say the elasticity coefficient in our example here. Oh, sorry, I screwed up. 1 divided by 0.4 is not 0.555. And we know that right away because if I get a 0.55 or a 0.56, that says that this should be inelastic. And if you change the price and you get a big change in quantity demanded, should you end up with an inelastic demand? No. So we know we entered something wrong into our calculator. So we take 1 divided by 0.4 and we get what? We get... 2.5. So when we look at that number, that number is between 1 and infinity. 
our elasticity coefficient, we take out the negative, we have 2.5. And that makes sense because we changed the price and the quantity demanded changed a lot. So our elasticity coefficient should be between one and infinity or elastic demand. Well, let's look at a second example here. Okay, so I'm just gonna clear this screen here. We're still gonna use that midpoint method. So we're gonna take and we're going to do, all right, our formula. And our formula is Q2 minus Q1 divided by the average of the two. And we divide by the difference in price, P2 minus P1. Divide that by the average, P2 plus P1 over two. So let's look at the scenario where we had a price of 15, a quantity of 100, we drop the price to $10, and the quantity is now 125. We know from our previous video that when we looked at total revenue, that this one is going to be what? Elastic, inelastic? Notice here that you change the price and the amount people are willing and able to buy change just a little, okay? So we expect this one to be inelastic, which means we expect the elasticity coefficient to be what? Somewhere between zero and one. All right, let's do the calculation. So quantity two, 125 minus quantity one, which is 100 divided by the average of the two. And we're gonna divide that by the change in price, which goes 10 minus 15, divided by the average of the two, 10 plus 15 over two. All right, so we work at this by doing the parentheses sections, okay? So 125 minus 100 is 25. 125 plus 100, that's 225. And if we take the average of that, 225 divided by two, we get 112.5. All right, on the other end here, 10 minus 15 is a negative five, and 10 plus 15 is 25 divided by two is 12 and a half. So 25 divided by 112.5 is 1 over 4.5 or 0.22222. And when the twos keep going, we can write that with a line above it to indicate that the twos keep going. All right, the other side, negative 5 divided by 12 and a half. Okay, we can simplify that down. That's our same as before, that negative 0.4. So if we take the 0.22222, or one divided by four and a half, and we divide by our negative 0.4, what we end up with is an elasticity coefficient of 0.5 that keeps going. So now you can see where I <laughs> screwed up earlier in the video, grabbed the wrong number off my page. And that's equivalent to 0.56, right? Because 0.5555, we round is 0.56. So where we write is this inelastic demand. Well, notice we changed the price, quantity demanded changed very little. So we came up with a elasticity coefficient that is between zero and one, so inelastic. And we can interpret this number, right? That elasticity coefficient says that if price goes up 1%, quantity demanded, will go down 0.56. That's where that negative ended up, right? There's actually a negative in our number here. And that negative is displayed in the interpretation. The price goes up 1%, quantity demanded goes down 0.56. In comparison, if you have an elasticity coefficient of 2.5, then when the price goes up 1%, 
quantity demanded goes down 2.5%. So you can see the elastic demand, you change the price, quantity demanded changed more than the price. And here we change the price and quantity demanded changed less than the price. So we can use the midpoint method to get an exact measure of elasticity, that elasticity coefficient, more precise than just looking at a steep or flat demand curve.